Welcome to the 2023 New Fish Feeder King Final. So welcome to Southfield Reservoir, the home of the New Fish Feeder King Final. And this place is an absolute mecca for feeder fishing. Anglers from all around the country come to fish here because it's probably the ultimate match feeder venue. The pegs are on a perfectly straight line, the pegs are close together and everyone's under pretty much the same conditions. It's just a brilliant match venue. The weights aren't always massive, but it's always super close and little decisions that the anglers make throughout the match can make a huge difference come the end of the day. Now the winner today will walk away with a massive £10,000, one of the biggest prizes in feeder fishing. Along with that bumper first prize, there's a golden peg up for grabs, a section money up for grabs, there's other plate, frame place money up for grabs, a fantastic final. It's no wonder so many anglers, thousands of anglers in fact, race for tickets for this because it's a qualification event. So every January the tickets go up for sale and there's a mad dash to get tickets and then three anglers from each qualifier get to fish his final, the 30 man final. Now there's been some real big hitters who've won this event in the past. Lee Kerry, who was a finalist today, has won it twice. Steve Ring has won it, again a finalist today. Neil Mallinson's won it one time and Jordan Scott's won it one time. Neil and Jordan unfortunately haven't made the final today, but Steve and Lee will no doubt be going for another title. But it's not just about the big names, there's loads of anglers here, local anglers who do exceptionally well at this venue, and other time served feeder anglers that know this venue inside out. It's an interesting venue, it's shallow, the wind affects it, there's different stamp of fish, there can be bream in some pegs, skims in the other, and it all makes for an exciting finish. I absolutely love this final, New Fish Feeder King final, something I really look forward to every year. One of the beauties about Southfield is, it's all the same depth, all the pegs are a similar distance apart and everybody's in a straight line. So it really does feel like a, intense fishing match which I really enjoy. Of course there's always good areas and bad areas but often at Southfield you're never quite sure. Rumour has it they tend to follow the wind which is a bit more that way today but you never know. At the moment it's just completely dropped altogether. I think with it being a little bit brighter and dropping I don't think weights are going to be fantastic. I think they're going to be, I'd certainly take £15 right now as a chance of a winning weight but there's a lot of big fishing here at the moment. Um, they fed at the earlier in the week like four fish were going like 12 13 14 pounds so it doesn't literally with an hour to go you can be out of it and still become the new fish feeder king so i'll be giving it the best shot see what happens to be honest with you i don't i don't worry about what i draw on here i think the, it, the matches on here get one from lots of different areas and you never know it's the most strangest place in the world to fish because you never know. So I draw my peg and just come and fish it. Um, but this peg, 39, uh, it started the short ones all this way, the three or four this way, really short. I'm talking really short. Then that way, they're all long pegs. So it's almost the last one of the long pegs. And it, and it, do, it has won a few matches and it's won matches this year. So uh, I'm not really grumbling. I can't, you, you can't grumble. I mean, um, it's a great event. It's a fantastic lineup and just get on with it really and see what happens and hope that my tactics are better than other lads either day. It's just what it is, they're all good anglers because they won't be good anglers because it's, you know, they've all qualified, so, you know. But it's a, you know, it's a great event. I mean, there's three or four on match calendar now. Feeder Masters, um, you know, River Fest, this one, that they're the, they're the ones who want to win really. You know, these are, these are the big days. So the tactics for Southfield are quite interesting. Now this is primarily a bream and skimmer water, but it's not one of those venues that notoriously throws up big weights. You know, a lot of the time in the summer, 15, 20, 25 pound could be a winning weight. So it's not one of those venues where anglers just fill it in and then wait for 10 bream. It's just not that kind of place. So the anglers today are fishing multiple lines. Some guys have put in a line as close as 10 meters. Then they've got a, a middle line at say 30 meters and then they'll have a longer line at maybe 50 meters. And then they're using three different um, spots to rotate between them. So they're looking to nick a fish, move. Because it's a shallow venue, the fish move between the anglers a lot, move between the lines a lot, and it's very rare to go in and just absolutely clatter the fish. 
So it's quite a thinking venue. The anglers here have to, it's a bit of a head scratch, you know, you've got to be on your toes, got to move between your lines, manage your swims and try and take the fish as they come. The last hour could be massive and you're definitely going to see window feeders in action, cage feeders in action, bullet style feeders, and then baits, traditional sort of baits like red worms will be key hook baits, small bits of worm, double maggot, that kind of thing. So really traditional tactics, but the interesting thing about Southfield is how the anglers are going to manage those swims to get the best from their pecs. So it's the day of the final of the New Fish Feeder King and um, obviously I've qualified myself and I found myself on peg 37, which, you know, is sort of just over a third of the way down the length. I'll be honest with you, Southfield's an interesting venue because it's shallow and featureless. The bream tend to roam, so I weren't particularly obsessed by where I drew this morning, but I can assure you that after the match, there will be a place that you should draw and where you shouldn't draw because there'll be shoals of little pods of bream and stuff like that. However, uh, as I've just said, an open mind is really important. So I'm quite happy with my peg. Um, it's flat at the moment, but it always is at the start. And then I believe the wind's going to get up six, seven, eight, nine mile an hour. There's a little bit of tow in the water and, um, and it's fishing quite well. The weather's held. Uh, we're off the back end of the summer. It's the 30th of uh, September today. so. It's right on the cusp, but the weather has held up. So I believe we'll have a great fishing match. Some fantastic anglers here. There's nobody that's a stranger to Southfield. The lads come here on a Wednesday for open matches, weekends, and obviously they fished all the qualifiers. So everyone knows what they're doing. There's going to be no free rides today. It's going to be a tough match and a fight to the death. And personally, I just can't wait to get stuck in. I'm happy, but it's Southfield, no one knows. You know what I mean? There's obviously loads of chat, pub talk as Phil calls it. You need to be here, you need to be there. On Wednesday, which is obviously only, what, three days ago, this was a good area. But Southfield's the most unpredictable bream venue I've ever come across, so I'm taking it with a pinch of salt. You know what I mean? Am I happy? Yes. Would I have been happy in lots of areas? Yes. So it's one of them. What will be, will be. I do think what normally happens is after 45 minutes, an hour, three or four little pockets of fish will emerge. You'll see little areas where there's two or three catching, and it's just a case of hoping that I'm on one of those pockets. But I was only, what, as I look now, because I'm facing away, two pegs to the right a few years ago when I won. Three hours in, I got a pound and a half. Finished with 15 pound and one. So you're never out of it on here. So here at Southfield, traditional feeder methods rule the roost. Method feeders, banjo feeders, pellet feeders, all those sort of self-hooking styles are not allowed at this venue. It's a 50 centimetre hook length, sort of minimum rule, making sure that anglers stick to that sort of traditional feeder style. The same goes for baits, you're not allowed to hair rig baits, you're not allowed pellets, and ground baits even have to be, if they're fish meal based, have to go through a one mil riddle so there can be no pellets like hidden in your ground base. So the whole ethos behind it is that they want to keep this venue like a traditional style and judging by how popular it is it's a great decision. It's at this point that it's really important to mention that these sorts of events and competitions don't happen without the fantastic people behind the scenes. In this case it's Andy Renton and Mick Axon and their helper Pete Parkinson. The team here run fantastic competitions year through, especially the New Fish Feeder King. Qualifiers all the way through the summer, culminating in the fantastic grand final that this year happened on the 30th of September. It's a great competition and everybody wants to be in it. But if you want to become the next Feeder King, then you need to check out the New Fish Southfield Reservoir Match Group page on Facebook when tickets for this great competition will go on sale in early to mid January Keep your eyes peeled, get those tickets, get yourself down in our qualifier and you too could be the next feeder king. The match started in typical Southfield fashion. Anglers were preparing their swims by using a large bait up feeder and with anglers having anything up to three swims in their pegs, they were preparing them in different ways, feeding different amounts. This is essential and while Southfield isn't a venue where you necessarily fill it in with bait, it is important to get your areas going, get your, get your swims and your lines fed to give you options throughout the day. A few anglers even got off to a quick start, Mick Viles, Lee Kerry, Tim Golby, all caught fish straight away. 
However, it was Tim who kept up that sustained pressure. The other anglers were catching odd fish, but Tim raced into an early lead. He got sort of nine or 10 fish when other anglers were on three or four. And although there were only skimmers, with an expected winning weight of around 15 pound, Tim was looking good. And after two and a half hours, it was estimated that he had sort of 10 pound in the net. He was doing really well and he had the unenviable task of having Steve Ringer next to him, but Tim was having the best of it at the moment. Now Southfield is one of those venues where the fish can drift around a lot. If Tim could hold the fish, he could potentially become the feeder king. However, just as he was catching really well, it could easily switch off and unfortunately that's what happened with Tim. The fish seemingly drifted off from his peg through no fault of his own and ended up in front of Steve who was now mounting a charge of his own. Catching an odd fish, he was getting to grips with a Southfield fish. However, there were several other anglers who were doing really well. Lee Kerry, former two-time feeder king and three-time feeder masters champion, was doing what he does best, catching fish. He was catching skimmers regularly. Brett Clark was on a charge. Mick Viles had caught some better fish and was doing really well. And Steve Whitfield had a change of tactics and decided to go out long. He was also catching much bigger stamp fish than the rest of the anglers. It really was too tight to call and any one of sort of five anglers were right in the mix. However, with just one minute to go, this happened to Mick Viles. No, it's not. No, 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 sorry, I know what's coming. I just took the sound. Fish on! Fish on!
Today, from peg 37 with 15 pound two, Mickey Vile. Hey! 